Hello, welcome to video number three. Now, this video focuses on page 25 again, but question three and four. And they are about estimation and um, thinking about possible solutions to a calculation without actually working out the answer. Now, why would you estimate an answer? Why would you do that? Because teachers normally want you to give the real answer. Now, the reason you would estimate would be to maybe check a calculation that you've done. So if you've worked out a calculation using a written method, like the column method, then you can simplify a calculation and create an estimate and see whether your answer is very near to the estimation, because if it's not, there must be something wrong. And the other reason you might estimate something is if you want to just give a quick approximation as to how much something is. So an example of that would be if you were in the shops and if you were walking around and collecting some items and you had something for 30p and something for £1.10, something for £2.30, you might simplify those numbers and just add up a rough estimate of the total so that you knew about how much you've spent so that you know if you've got a, you've got enough money whether you need to put anything back or whether you've got enough money to maybe buy something else that you need so we're going to have a look at question three now and see how we're going to use estimation there right so question three let's have a read holly wants to work out the answer to 48 add 29 Write a simpler calculation Holly could use to estimate the answer. Now it hasn't asked you to work out the answer to 48 add 29. That's not what the question is asking. The question wants you to write down a simpler calculation that Holly could use to estimate the answer. So another number sentence which would help her to more easily get to an answer that would be very close. Now I'm going to have a look at another example of this question, just with some different numbers, just to be able to explain this to you. And we will also then have a look at that second bit of that question as well with the longer box. So this question says, Mrs. Francis wants to work out the answer to 54 add 29. Write a simpler calculation she could use to estimate the answer. That's the bit we're going to look at first, and then we will have a look at the next bit. So the question was, Mrs. Francis wants to work out the answer to 54, add 29. Write a simpler calculation she could use to estimate the answer. Now what I've got in front of me here is 54 and 29. Okay. Now, instead of doing adding 29, 29 is very nearly another number that is a much rounder number and a much easier number to add. Can you think what it is? 30. That's right, 29 is nearly 30. So if I'm just estimating, why don't I round the 29 up to 30? And then the calculation will be much easier to work out because I'm just adding 30 rather than 29, I'm going to add 30. So I've got 54 and I've now got 30. So a calculation I could do instead would be 54 add 30. Now that's not the same as 54 add 29, but it would give me a very close answer to what it actually is. And that's all it's asking me to do, a simpler calculation that would estimate the answer. So instead of 29, I have rounded it up and done 54, add 30 instead. Now the second part of the question, let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at the second part of that question. Mrs. Francis says 54 plus 29 equals 73. Explain why she's wrong. 54 plus 29 equals 73. Explain why she's wrong. Well, let's have a look at the Numicon. So it says in the question 
that I reckon that 54 plus 29 equals 73, and it says that I'm wrong, but why? Now let's just work out the answer to our estimation. We've now got 54 add 30. 54 add 30. Okay, so the answer to that, 54 add 30, is 84. Now, in the, the question that we just looked at, it said that I thought that 54 add 29, so just one less than this, would be 73. So why is that so wrong? The reason it's so wrong is because it's so much less. And we know that 54 add 30 equals 84. So 54 plus 29 can't be 73 because that's 11 less than what I've got for my estimation. So the reason why it's wrong is because it's much too small, because we know this. And you can use this answer to your estimation as proof in your answer to explain why I'm wrong. Right, let's have a look at another example. Now in this example, I've got 73 take away 39. So I've got 73 in front of me. And I want to take away 39. Now, just like the last one, let's think what would be the simpler calculation I could do to find an estimation of the answer. OK, it's not the exact answer, but it will be very close to it. So what would I do this time? I need to take away 39. And looking at the, the numicon that I've got there, looking at the number 73, that looks like it might be a bit messy and a bit tricky. So what could I take away instead of 39? I could take away 40. Now that wouldn't give me the, the correct, completely correct answer, but we're only looking for an estimation. So actually I could just take away 40. One, two, three, four. Because that's much easier than taking away 39 and it will give me an answer that is very close. So I could take away 40. So the simpler calculation for this would be 73 take away 40. And what's the answer to 73 take away 40? What have we got? We've got 33. So that's an estimation. It's not the correct answer to the original question, but we were looking for a calculation which would give us an estimation, an answer that was close. So we've now looked at two examples to help you with number three, as well as the second bit of the question. Holly says 48 plus 29 equals 87. Explain why Holly cannot be correct. So the example that we've just been through will help you to do that bit as well. Now you can also use that method to calculate things in your head mentally more quickly by rounding up a number, so making a calculation that's easier to create a, a close estimate, but then adjusting the answer to actually get to the real answer. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Right, so we're going to work out the answer to 54 add 29, but we're going to use estimation to help us so we can do it easily in our heads, but we will have to do a little bit of adjustment, a bit of changing at the end, so watch closely. So this is 54 add 29, so I've got 54 here, and I'm going to add 29. Okay, let's just count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 54 add 29. Now, Instead of adding 29 in my head, because that might take a little while, because I don't really want to add on nine ones, um, because that can get a bit tricky to do quickly. So what could I add instead? Instead of 29, what could I add? I could round it up to the nearest 10, and I could actually add 30. So I could give the number one more, 29 becomes 30, which is the same as having a, a whole other 10. So I've now got 30 here. 
And so I'm adding 30 instead. Now it won't get me the final answer, but we're, we're getting there. So I've added one more to make it easier, to make it 30. So I'm going to add 30. So what's 54 add 30? It's 84. Now I need to remember, this is the important bit because I'm not looking for an estimation here. I'm looking for the right answer. I need to remember that actually I did add an extra one to make a 10. I did add an extra one here. So now that I've done the done the bit to make it easier for myself, I could just take that one away again. I'm going to get rid of that one. And I'm going to take one away. And so we had 84, but we're going to take away the, the one, the extra one that we added to make it easier. And what do I get? I'll get 83. So I added one to 29 to make it 30 because that was easier to add in my head. I got to 84, but then I took away the one. I subtracted the one that I had added on to actually get to the proper answer. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let's have a look at another one, which is similar, but different in, in some ways. So here we've got 73, take away 39. So I've got 73 here and I need to take away 39. Now the last one was adding, this one's taking away, but the concept is the same and the method is the same. So what could I take away instead of 39, which would make it simpler, make it easier, would make it better for me to do in my head quickly. And then at the end, I'll just make it right again. So what could I take away instead? Yeah, I could just take away 40 because that's much easier than taking away 39. So let's take away 40 from the number. Now, what am I left with here? What am I left with? I'm left with 33. Now I do need to remember that one of these, whichever one you want, I'll put a dot in this one, one of these here actually was added on as an extra because to get to 39 from to, from 39 to 40 to take that away instead I did actually take away an extra one instead of taking away 39 I, I subtracted 40 so I subtracted one more than I actually needed to so what I need to do now is I need to do the opposite so we've talked about inverse operations on the last one I added 30 and I added one too many so I subtracted the one extra but on this one I have subtracted one too many so I need to add back on the one that should still be remaining because I subtracted too many so I need to add one back on so what is our final answer 34 there we go. That's how you use rounding and adjusting to find out answers to calculations quickly in your head. Now we're ready to move on to question four. Ben divides 137 sweets equally between nine bags. Ben says there are six sweets in each bag. Explain how you know that Ben is wrong without doing the calculation. So that last bit is really important without doing the calculation. It doesn't want you to do 137 sweets divided by nine. It doesn't want you to do that because it wants you to explain why he's wrong without even working it out by looking at his answer and what he thinks. Now I've got another example to show you. So we're going to go through that now, which will help you to answer this question. So my example is, Mrs. Buchanan divides 144 stickers equally between eight children. She says each child will get 11 stickers. Explain how you know that Mrs. Buchanan is wrong without doing the calculation. So let's have a look and see how we can work this one out and hopefully it will help you with the one in your book. So let's see how we can prove that 144 divided by 8 is not 11, as Mrs Buchanan thinks. 
but we're not going to do the calculation. I'm not actually going to divide 144 by 8. I'm going to prove it in two ways. Now, the first thing you can do to prove that it's wrong is use the inverse. And remember, we've looked at those fact families and those fact triangles. And if you've got three numbers in a fact family, it means that you can do you can rearrange these to create another division, but you could also multiply these two numbers, which should get you back to here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to work out what 8 times 11 is. Because if Mrs Buchanan thinks that 144 divided by 8 equals 11, that should mean that 8 times 11 is 144. So 8 times 11. Now the 11 times table is actually really easy because it follows a pattern because you're thinking of 8 tens and 8 units, which is 88. So that doesn't take us back to our original total. So that can't be right. So that's one bit of proof. One bit of proof that it's wrong is because 8 times 11 equals 88. And so it can't be right. The second bit of proof that we could do is by looking at a chunk of 8s and seeing whether this answer of 11 works. Now, I know that 80 divided by 8 equals 10, which is the same as knowing that 8 times 10 is 80. Okay, I know that fact. So if 80 divided by 8 is 10, and I know that because I know this multiplication fact and how this is in one family, then one more lot of eights, somehow this number is looking very, very big because 80 divided by 8 is 10. So if I'm going to divide something by 8 and get 11, it's just going to be one more lot of eights, which we've worked out is 88. So 144 is way too big. So this is another piece of proof to show because we know that 80 divided by 8 is 10. And so one more 8 does not make 144. One more lot of 8 to have 11 here is not 144. That number is too big. So that's another piece of proof. So maybe you can use that when you're thinking of the other question in your book. Right, so now you've got lots of things to help you with those two questions there and to give you a bit of background. You'll be all experts now. I have found you a game which works on um, the near multiples, adding and subtracting, which we've been working on and the examples that I gave you. And it helps you to work out how to add things quickly in your head by adding a chunk that's easier and then adjusting it afterwards. So I'll show you that game now. Right, so this is the game. I'm going to put the link in the description of the YouTube video and I'm going to show you now by playing along on my computer how to use it and how it works. Right, so this is the game that I've suggested. The link will take you to a website that looks like this and you just need to scroll down and you'll find the game here at the bottom. And um, often it gives you some other options of games at the bottom underneath as well that you might want to have a go at at some point. Um, but the game that I'd like you to focus on is this one here. So you just click on play game in the center. And then we have a screen like this. So add and subtract near multiples. Now I want you to start by doing add near multiples of 10 to two digit numbers and you can select more than one. Um, in fact, you can select all of them and subtract near multiples of 10 from two digit numbers. And so that's what we've been doing. 
adding and subtracting. So a near multiple of 10 is a number that's nearly a multiple of 10. OK, so like 29, which is close to 30. So once you've selected the ones you're going to play, you click on play. And then it shows you a, a number line with numbers missing. It gives you the question at the top. 64 add 31 equals what? So what it wants you to do is it wants you to use the, the, the jump options at the bottom to work out the answer. OK, now you'll notice that there's not a jump of 31 because what it wants you to do is it wants you to use near multiples to try and work it out. So 31 is very nearly 30. So I'm going to do a jump of 30 first. You just drag it on and then it will ask you what the answer to that is. So 64 add 30 okay, is 94. And then we need to remember that actually we're adding 31. So we've added 30. We need to add one more. So I drag on the jump. And then again, it will ask me the answer. 94 add 1, 95. So I got that one right. And then you can say next question. So this one, 48 add 48. This is a good one. So 48 is nearly which of these numbers down here? That's well, quite close to 48. That would be much easier to add. 50. So I'm going to add 50. Drag that on. 48 add 50. So that's five tens to add on to the four tens that I've got there. And the eight units will remain, remain the same. So 98. Now, I've added 50, but actually I should have just added 48. So I need to take away two because otherwise it's not the same question. And it's not the right answer. So I'm going to take away two now. And it's going to jump back. So 98 take away two is 96. So I've added 50 because that's nice and easy. But then I've just taken away two. OK, so it's a quicker way of doing it rather than adding 48 in a different way. Now, if I just come back to change level a minute, there's, there's more... Um, questions it will give you but there are other options on here and you might want to have a look, look at the ones the near multiples of a hundred if you would like to move yourself on a bit more that would be a really good one to try and in fact you could have a go at all of the ones which are kind of underneath the adding near multiples the ones above will probably be too easy but the ones down here are a good option to choose so if I just go on to this one quickly adding near multiples of 100 to three digit numbers right so this question here 826 add 601 it sounds awfully big but we can do this because we can just use easy chunks to help us so 601 I'm now looking for a multiple that is near 100, a multiple of 100 rather than a multiple of 10. And 601 is very close to 600. So I'm going to do 600 first. So 826 add 600. So I'm going to add 600s to here. So 826, 926, 1026. 1,126, 1,226, 1,326, and 1,426. Now, it's actually 601, so I've done 600, so I now need to do my one more. So 1,427. See, it wasn't that hard after all. Let's have one more go. Right, we're going to have a look at this question, just because it's slightly different. 177 add 298 okay so 298 is very nearly 300 so i'm going to add 300 first because that's much easier so 177 add 300 so three more hundreds will be 477 but then actually it was only 298 that i needed to add so i need to remember i need to take away two it was much easier adding 300, but you must always remember to actually then take away any 
um, extras that you, you did add to make it easier, to make sure you are still getting the right answer. So 477, take away two, 475. So have a little look at that game. I really recommend it. I think it will be a really good one to practice a little bit more the work that we've been doing in this video. And I will see you next week for some more. I hope you enjoy reading my letter this week and I'll see you soon. Bye.